Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. Today, we'll be going over the Hungarian opening, which in my opinion is a very overlooked opening. And a lot of people don't like it, and I'll mention it is G3, and a lot of people don't like it because it seems very passive, uh, and it doesn't seem very strong uh, in these center squares. However, it leads to a position that is very similar with more generic openings. Um, because realistically, any opening that you fee and kettle the bishop will lead you to a position that could look like a position that you get from the Hungarian opening. Because the Hungarian opening is, is fee and kettling the bishop, uh, the light square bishop that is in the beginning of the game. So it's doing a similar move, uh, just in a different move order. It, it gets you to a similar position, only in a different move order. And uh, usually you find yourself in very similar positions uh, when you play with the ready opening, uh, or the English opening, um, or sometimes even the Queen's Pawn opening, uh, and Queen's Gambit uh, accepted, declined, uh, and even London system openings with this move. So it's very common, the position that you reach, just it's not very popular to play it in this order. And I think that that's very overlooked, because this, this move here, it seems really good for you um, from this video that I'll show you right now, um, because I'll, I'll show you a couple of the, the, not traps necessarily, but some of the ideas and theories that you have with this um, to help you play this. So let's get on with it. Uh, you start with g3, like I mentioned, and the only goal that you really have is fee and the bishop, so it doesn't matter what black plays. Um, black really has four options um, that, that Lee Chess considers you know, to be good, good options, um, but against any of these, you go ahead and bring out your bishop. Uh, to g2, which is what you freed um, for your bishop by playing g3. Um, and quickly before I move forward, I wanted to mention that uh, Lee Chess actually puts this opening um, with the same amount of power as e4 um, opening. And I mean by power, meaning it scores uh, the same. White wins, uh, in fact, white wins more games with, uh, with g3 than with, uh, with, with e4 which might sound surprising, but it just shows you how powerful uh, this, this opening is. So, uh, like I said, you're going to play this move regardless of what black plays. Um, and here, black can either play, uh, you know, this knight move here, um, or this move here. Uh, or, if black already played one of these two moves, uh, black can either play the other move. So, for example, if black first started with this move, then black can play this move. Um, or if black first started with this move, black can play this move. Um, or if black first started with any of these two moves, black could play uh, one of these center pawn moves. Um, and this seems very confusing, but I'll break it down easily. Essentially, if after this move here, you find yourself in a position that's not one of these moves, um, so it could be this pawn and this pawn, it could be this pawn and this knight, it could be this knight and this pawn, it could be this pawn and this knight, uh, or it could be this pawn and this pawn. So if you find yourself in any position uh, with these four pieces here, um, that is not uh, both of the pieces on these moves, then you're going to go ahead and develop your knight. Um, so hopefully you understand that. Um, you're going to go and develop your knight if you don't find yourself in this position, okay? And so let's talk about that first. If uh, black decides to play, for example, this move, then like I said, you, do, you go ahead and you develop your knight, um, and you're prepared to castle, and you're prepared to bring out this pawn here. Uh, and, and realistically, even if black played this move, um, or in any of the, of the other combinations with these four pawns that are not uh, these two pawns, um, you, you prepare to play this move uh, pr protected by this pawn here, uh, and also the knight and the queen, so a very protected pawn. Um, and so you have ideas of castling, uh, of moving this pawn up, of moving this pawn up, um, and it's just a very happy position for you. Uh, now, let's get on and talk about uh, what if black plays the seemingly better idea, which is taking advantage of the fact that you don't have any pawns here and playing this move here. And this seems very good, and the reason that I kind of separate this move from the other uh, uh, combinations that you might see is because this is actually not the best move. Um, it allows for something other than knight to f3, uh, it allows for this move here, uh, c4, and you can already see the opening kind of transposing into the English opening. Uh, with the other variations, it was kind of transposing into the ready opening, uh, but here it, you, you take yourself into the English opening. Um, and black is presented with two big options, capturing 
are pushing forward. If black protects uh, in any way that black decides to, then I would recommend capturing uh, and playing either, not that move, either this move uh, or this move, preparing to play the other move. Um, but realistically, black is presented with two big options. Uh, and, and black's better option is to move forward. This is the better option. Um, but we'll start with the worst option, which is if black decides to capture. And the reason that this is bad is it allows you to use a very nice tactic, which is queen over here to a4. And you can already see how similar this is to the queen's gambit uh, accepted variation, uh, where you fork the pawn uh, here with the king here. Um, and now black actually can blunder a pawn um, with this seemingly good move uh, because black forgets the bishop right here. Uh, and so you can go ahead and capture the knight here. Uh, and after capture, capture, you're uh, you know checking the opponent. So after the opponent plays the only move that is good, otherwise the opponent would lose the rook. Um, so other, after uh, the black plays this move, you can go ahead and capture this pawn and you're just completely winning. You're up. Uh, you know, a pawn, but also you have these two center pawns um, and a really nice position. So if black doesn't blunder and plays a move like, uh, well, either knight here uh, or bishop here um, or even queen here, it doesn't really matter. You go ahead and capture this pawn here um, on c4, evening out the material, but also you, you can easily and quickly find out um, what the advantage that you have. You, first of all, have this attacking bishop on this pawn here. Uh, which is the first kind of thing that you have. So uh, you, you, this is a huge blunder because black is going to have to play this move here uh, or this move here or, or do something to prohibit you from grabbing this pawn followed by this rook here. So this bishop already proves to be a little threat for black. Also, you have two uh, central pawns for black swan. Um, and although these pawns aren't moved yet, you have ideas of pushing this, I, this pawn um, with the queen obviously supporting it uh, if the bishop doesn't move. Uh, or you have ideas of pushing this pawn, um, followed by either this move uh, or the knight or something uh, along this idea. So it's a really nice position for you and you have, you have a lot of ideas. So if we go back to black's uh, better option, which is going ahead and moving forward, this still isn't a good option because the one downside to focusing on the king side here um, and, and developing this bishop here and giving it a, a, a nice uh, diagonal is that this bishop here is very lonely and the dark square bishop doesn't get much action in the early game. Um, but, but by moving the pawn forward, you actually allow the black uh, bishop into it by playing this move here, d3. You give black's bishop this nice diagonal, um, but usually black, black's bishop, sorry, the dark square bishop for you, doesn't get to these to these positions here uh, because you're actually threatening to play this move here uh, followed by capturing with the with the dark square bishop and now you just have a winning position so if black plays a move like this for example then you can go ahead and play that move there uh, and and this is just completely winning uh, after black captures you go ahead and capture back with the bishop like i mentioned uh, getting the bishop into the game and now you have two nice bishops eyeing down this position here uh, and it's just such a beautiful position for you. Um, and, and you're set to win the game. Uh, after the knight moves, you can castle. Uh, the queen can get into the game, checking the opponent. Uh, it's just very, very fun to play as white. Well. So this is why uh, moving these two pawns seemingly you know, is a nice position, but theoretically doesn't work. Um, and if black, like I said, plays any other combination, so let's, for instance, say black plays this move here, you just go ahead and bring out your knight here uh, to this spot here, um, and, and black can go ahead and, and maybe move the bishop here, but then you castle, you have ideas of moving uh, you know, these pawns out in, in any order that you see, see fit, and this really just transposes into a very nice position for you. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you guys use the Hungarian opening, then let me know in the comments below, and let me know what lines you guys get yourself into it with. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.